Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. You know, lies and uh, deceit goes as far. And after a while, um, even if you try to employ the same techniques, the people that you uh, lie or try to deceit, deceive, um, will not care, uh, will not care, and they will demand change course. Um, in this case, we have Ukraine, the um, Zaporozhia nuclear power plant and the Russians. And um, what happens over there, I don't know. Um, and the only ones that know are the guys involved in all this uh, situation. The thing is, um, the way I see it from here is that a fact is that the Russians took control of the plant, Ukrainians bombed them, these guys bomb them back or use it as a cover to um, attack or hit shell Ukrainian targets which and then the Ukrainians instead of saying we can't do we can't shoot back because uh, it's the Zaporozhia power plant and these guys are weasels they shoot and try to kill them right destroy them so then that, that exposes the whole thing to a you know, safety threat and uh, it's very important the problem is, uh, you know, they lie, both of them. They brought those guys from IEA and so on. They will figure out how much they are allowed to figure out because they're going to be turned around whenever they want. And anyway, the thing is like this. That plant, if it gets damaged, Ukrainians will be affected the most and some Russians and probably a little bit of uh, Eastern Europe. And that would be it. All right. Besides the fact that no electricity now, the Ukrainians, if they continue to do what they're doing, right, including the Russians, uh, they will remain without electricity. So then the population will be, I don't care who's shelling who, I don't care whose fault is it, it is, I want energy, I want to have energy. Once they will not have energy, they will not care that it was Russians' fault, it was, uh, I don't know, Zaratustra's fault, or it was Tom Jones's fault, or the Ukrainians, they will say, I want energy i don't care who gives me energy it's about survival so that's where they're gonna get in case they hit it and this is they're almost there there's one more step there's one more step so this is fox news from september 4th 2022 ukraine nuclear power plant near front lines losses lost power line amid fears of disaster i didn't read that right Ukraine nuclear plant near front lines loses last power line amid fears of disaster. So the, the power lines close to the front lines lost. That means the power plant loses power. It's not going to send anything over there. Ukraine loses power. It's not going to have power. So who's affected? The population. So let's see what's going to happen. Ukraine's Zaporozhia nuclear power plant lost its last line of external power on Saturday with just one of its six reactors remaining in operation. The Russian military has held the power plant since the early day of Russian President Putin's February's invasion. Uh, it was not his invasion, it was the country's invasion, and we're not going to go into that, but I already know you're a weasel, Fox News. All right. The cutoff of the plant's final main power line leaves only a reserve line to supply electricity to Ukraine's grid, and that will go away. And who's going to benefit? Russia. Uh, now, can the Russians push everything towards this and further? Yes, 100%. Works in their advantage? 100%. Could that be, you know, considered like, well, it's because of you, you don't have energy, so uh, how about come and negotiate? Yes, that's very possible. Very possible. Is 100%? No. Is 100% that maybe Ukrainians want to create that problem and then say, the, say, hey, the Russians created, they are the bad guys. But why would you do that? I think they're, I'm not going to say it's uh, justified or not. That's not the point. Their hatred towards, uh, towards U U Russia is already there. So the hatred is already there. So they don't have to create more pan panic and, uh, and unnecessary hatred. What are you going to uh, uh, get out of it? Nothing. So I don't know if the Ukrainians will benefit Ukrainians. The weasels in charge, I'm talking, not the population. The population is already raped and left over there for the next uh, uh, available partner. So the situation is, what are you going to do? 
you're going to remain without that. The only thing that they can do, the, these weasels over there, use the population suffering and to look towards the population in the Western Europe and say, see, the Russians are doing this to us, they're going to do it to you next. So you'd rather give us what we need here to fight them. Otherwise, they will do it to you, like you depend on Russian uh, electricity on Zaporozhye nuclear power plant, whatever, you know what I mean? But this is what the Russians are. So we are the ones that fight for your freedom. So you do what the, your, your guys are telling you, your guys are in charge of you, tell you, which is, you know, pay more for this, pay more for that, uh, accept the situation, status quo, don't get this, don't have that, live in scarcity for us and for you. And then guess what? If this war is going to be perpetual, your life is going to be shitty as well. But at least you do it because the Russians might break through and come and get you and everything you got. And your life is going to be even worse than the one you got right now. This is how the, the story goes, actually. And then even if this war ends, do you think those guys are going to get back to what we have right now? No. Not, or we had yesterday or day before? No, because it's going to be the global warming uh, scare. And it's going, to be more, uh, it's going to be more pandemics. I guarantee you that. Pandemics, global warming, electricity shortages, uh, high inflation, pr high prices. You'll see. You'll see and we talk about it because I won't go anywhere unless I'm going like this or people do like this. I'm not going to go anywhere. So, uh, well, let's see what they get here. So, the Russian military has held a power plant since every... Okay, we know that one. Zaporozhye power plant is the largest. We know that one. The UN International Atomic Energy deployed a team to the plant to inspect it. The team's arrival was delayed due to Russian shelling around. I don't care who shelled it. I don't think the Ukrainians share, care. And remember, those guys who showed up over there, what are they going to say? Yeah, the Russians are shelling. Do something about it. What are they going to do? Nothing. Everybody's going to blame Russia. Because those guys, I don't have any faith that those guys, who, uh, the inspectors, will say, yeah, 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 this is what we found. Now, because that's the way it works. And you want an example? And I use, always I use this example. It's the same inspectors, not the same people, the same organization, went to Iran to inspect. And what they do? They send all kind of agents from foreign countries. And the Iranians said, I will never get any of these guys uh, back here. So yeah, it's just who funds them again, like the television, the uh, media outlets, who funds them? United Nations? <laughs> Who funds United Nations? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. International Atomic Energy. Really? How is... Who... Who... who how do they get their money? From you and I? And if from us, it's not because we want to give them. It's taken by force. But it's not from us. So, or it is from us because it's from our taxes probably. The, the, the stress at Ukraine's plant comes as the rest of Europe turns towards nuclear energy to help offset the loss of oil and natural gas imports from Russia. I don't think this Zaporozhye nuclear power plant gives energy to Germany or France or anything like that. I know France is about, I don't know, 80% atomic energy uh, generated. Uh, Germany was scheduled to close all of its reactors, oh my god, poverty on you, by the end of the year, but is now debating whether to keep them open into next year or even longer. Belgium, meanwhile, was planning to close two reactors by 2025, but will now keep them open through 2036, according to the Wall Street Journal. France is looking to build an additional 14 reactors over the next several decades. The UK, Czech Republic, Poland and others are also planning for new reactors, according to the report. That's what you got to do. Atomic energy, what are you going to do? Solar and wind, you got to be in kidding me but they try to push that you'll see it's gonna be like this you own nothing you are hurt you are happy about it right and uh don't say anything that's how it's gonna be and live in scarcity that's the, the the mantra yeah so i don't care those guys will not have energy the the ukrainians they already don't have almost anything so who benefits the russians benefit well, you can say yeah because they forced the ukrainians to uh, ask for this and you know to to come back and negotiate the ukrainians will not do that but the guy in, char in charge they're not hurt whatsoever the population is hurt but it's already dead it's already like hurt as hell so you can't go further than that how are you gonna do maybe no water and no electricity they're moving towards that that, that area 
So, I don't know. It's just uh, getting worse and worse. And uh, one reactor out of six were operating the emergency line. All right. Well, thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.